And good morning. Welcome to Christ Lutheran Church. Those brave souls that have weathered this blistering morning, uh, you get extra, extra credit in heaven for being here today. Just wanted to put that out for you. So, and those of you online, the same goes for you for t- tuning in this morning. A few announcements to share with you. Um, this morning, we have, we have Sunday school classes for all ages. The third, ages three through fifth grade will meet downstairs. Middle high youth will meet upstairs, <coughs> to all of my directions. And adults will meet in the parlor. There we go. We're good. A new member class continues in the, in the, in the chapel this morning. And come join us. This Wednesday, we have soup and, um, soup and bread dinners again, uh, probably downstairs. We're, <laughs> we're still trying to figure out where the, the part for the, the um, furnace is. It's coming. Um, but anyway, so we gather on Wednesdays at 6 p.m. Uh, for soup and bread and fellowship, followed by a beautiful service, the Holden Evening Prayer, at 7 p.m. here in the sanctuary. If you like to uh, make soup and like to share soup, uh, sign up on the board in the narthex right outside and uh, bring some soup to share on Wednesday uh, at 6 p.m. Other announcements, we continue with the book study on the, um, oh, where are you? Where is it, Cindy? I can't, book of, what, the book of life? The cup of life. You said book of life. The book, the cup of our life. Not the book of life. Jesus takes care of that. She's, he's copyrighted it. Anyway, um, we, we continue that Wednesday nights uh, at 7.30 in the, are the she, is she meeting in the chapel? And Thursdays at 10 in the parlor. Keep track of all these places. Um, Handy Folk Group meets this Friday. Believe it or not, this Friday is March 1st. Isn't that great? And just to, a personal note, this Thursday is Josh and Jesse's first full anniversary. Speaking of the devil, here's little Michael David. He's responsible for them, somewhat, or indirectly. And um, <laughs> I just think that's pretty cool. They were, they were married on Leap Day four years ago this month. So, other announcements are before you. Pickleball, where's Shelly? Shelly, do we have pickleball? Yes? Pickleball today? Pickleball. And that's at Garce Mill Park, just down the road at the courts, and that's at 2 p.m. 2 p.m., pickleball. Whether you know how to or even have a pickleball racket, you can come and have fun with the pickleball group. Uh, Blood Drive is Thursday. And that's from 1 to 6 p.m. We'll figure out where it is. (laughs) It's going to be somewhere (laughs) in the building. (laughs) Probably downstairs. (laughs) Who knows? Anyway, it'll be here. Um, If you want to give blood, you can just uh, sign up at Red Cross. Yeah, redcross.org or redcrossblood.org. Okay. And uh, sign up for that. Schedule your give. What? There's an app for that. There's an app for that. (laughs) All right, so let us begin our worship this morning with the confession and forgiveness found on our bulletin. And online, our bulletin is found at ChristLutheranRoanoke.org. Just click on the 9 a.m. bulletin. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who writes the law on our hearts, who draws all people together through Jesus. Amen. Amen. Held in God's mercy, let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Holy God, we confess that we are caught in snares of sin and cannot break free. We hoard resources while our neighbors are hungry and cold. We speak in ways that silence others. We are silent when we should speak up. You keep score in our hearts. We let hurts grow into hatred. For all these things and for the sins only you know, forgive us, Lord. Here is a flood of grace. 
Out of love for the whole world, God draws near to us, breaks every snare of sin, washes away our wrongs, and restores the promise of life through Jesus Christ. Amen. God, by the passion of your blessed Son, you made an instrument of shameful death to be for us the means of life. Grant us so that to glory in the cross of Christ, that we may gladly suffer shame and loss for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The reading is from Genesis chapter 17. When Abram was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to Abram and said to him, I am God Almighty. Walk before me and be blameless. And I will make my covenant between me and you and will make you exceedingly numerous. Then Abram fell on his face and God said to him, as for me, this is my covenant, covenant with you. You shall be the ancestor of a multitude of nations. No longer should your name be Abram, but your name shall be Abraham. For I have made you the ancestor of a multitude of nations. I will make you exceedingly fruitful, and I will make nations of you, 
and kings shall come from you. I will establish my covenant between me and you and your offspring after you throughout their generations for an everlasting covenant to be God to you and to your offsprings after you. God said to Abraham, as for Sarai, your wife, you shall not call her Sarai, but Sarah shall be her name. I will bless her, and moreover, I will give you a son by her. I will bless her, and she shall give rise to nations. Kings of peoples shall come from her. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. message. Come on up. Come on up. Come on up. Are you coming too? No. (laughs) All right. So we're not going to be sitting long. So if you don't want to get back up right away, (laughs) just an FYI. We just heard about a guy named Abraham. Abraham. He was really old, and God, and so was his wife. She was really old, and God said, hey, guess what? You're going to have some kids, and those kids are going to have 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 kids, and on and on and on and on and on. So if we back up a little bit, oh, okay, there we go. If we back up a little bit, uh, God came to Abraham one other time and said this, I will bless you and make your name great. You say that? I will bless you and make your name great. And he said, and the, your descendants will number more than the stars. Could you count all the stars in the heavens? Uh, no. No! You could count the ones on the page. You're welcome to do that. Yes. So that you will be a blessing. I will bless you so that you will be a blessing. God blesses us through Abraham so that we can bless others, share good news with others. And we're going to share some good news, but we got to stand up. You ready, Michael David? Because I know this really great song about Abraham. Do you know what I'm talking about? Do you know a song about Father Abraham? I think we're going to need all the people out here to help us, don't you? Yeah, I think we're going to ask them to stand up so that they can sing with us. Do you remember the song? No. Oh, are you going to repeat after me? Father Abraham had many kids, and many kids had Father Abraham. Do you know it? And so are you. So let's all praise the Lord. Everybody got it? You good? All right, sing with me. Father Abraham had many kids, and many kids had Father Abraham. I am one of them, and so are you. So let's all praise the Lord. Right arm, Father Abraham had many sons, and many sons had Father Abraham. I am one of them, and so are you. So let's all praise the Lord. Right arm, left arm, Father Abraham had many kids, and many kids had Father Abraham. I am one of them, and so are you. So let's all praise the Lord. Right arm, left arm, right foot, Father Abraham. Oh, this is good. Many kids, and many kids had Father Abraham. I am one of them, and so are you. So let's all praise the Lord. Right arm, left arm, right foot, left foot. Father Abraham had many kids. Oh, you got it. And many kids had Father Abraham. I am one of them, and so are you. So let's all praise the Lord. Right arm, left arm, right foot, left foot. Turn it around. Sit down. Let's pray. Oh, God, thank you for music and for laughter and for dancing and for blessing Abraham and all of us so that we can be a blessing to your world. Amen. Thanks for coming up, guys. Good job, Michael David.
So at Christ Lutheran Church, we have daily pew aerobics. Come join <laughs> us every day. And you thought hot yoga was a mess, right? <laughs> the reading of the gospel today, according to St. Mark, the eighth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus began to teach them that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed. And after three days, rise again. He said all this quite openly, and Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But turning and looking at his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. He called the crowd with his disciples and said to them, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. For what will it profit them to gain the whole world and forfeit their life? Indeed, what can they give in return for their life? Those who are ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of them the Son of Man will also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angel. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Peace be to you, in Christ. And so we hear from the scripture this incredible scripture telling us about what it is to be a follower of Jesus. If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. In this passage from Mark, we find Peter reacting negatively to the harsh reality of Jesus' truthfulness of the cost of discipleship. The Lord is laying it on the line and being upfront about the way of the cross. Following Jesus is simple. Just follow him. But it comes with a price. It requires the surrender of the self and worldly gains. Now, Peter may be concerned that others would be reluctant to become a disciple and steer clear of Jesus. But Jesus is honest and concise in his description of the road he is traveling on and the necessity of devotion and sacrifice it requires. In 1913, the Federal Trade Commission was brought into fruition and came out with what was called the Truth in Advertising Act. The Federal Truth in Advertising Law is a collection of rules contained in the FTC Act that regulate most ad content nationwide to this day. It's been updated over the, the centuries. It's administered and enforced by the U.S. Federal Trade Commission. Now, the reason for it comes back with not just snake oil salesmen, but in recent times. For instance, anybody here wear New Balance shoes? Do you have a pair in your, in your uh, closet? Good shoes. Well, they got in trouble the other couple, couple of decades ago because in their, in their uh, advertisements, they claimed that wearing their shoes would strengthen and shape the gluteus maximus muscles on your body even though they had no real evidence. And in another case, the FTC permanently banned the seven-day marketing from ever marketing info, info commercials again uh, because of deceptive claims that their seven-day full body cleanse would take care of all ailments you could consider, from weight loss to hair growth, all sorts of things. Do the seven-day full body cleanse. You'll be better for it. Well, in its history, the FTC has put together laws to protect customers and consumers against false or misleading advertising. In life and in the gospel, it is the truth that can set us free. 
Now, when it comes to following Jesus, sometimes the truth is that it can be hard. There can be sacrifice and hardship, suffering and pain. Professor Dong Leong of Garrett Evangelical Theological Seminary in in Illinois writes, following Jesus was never meant to make life easy, predictable, and obvious. Rather, the hope of resurrection validates where we are, the life that we live. We are seen by God. To take up the cross is nothing new, especially for those who are already living such a life. The author continues, that is why we are called to not be ashamed of our lives burdened by oppressive crosses. The hope of resurrection invites us to believe that the Son of Man who lived this life of rejection and suffering leads us to life everlasting with God. Now, we're in the season of Lent, a period of 40 days before Easter observed in the Christian calendar. It's a time of reflection, fasting, prayer, taking us through Holy Week and the Passion of Christ and culminating with the glorious celebration of the resurrection of Christ on Easter morn. Even in Lent, and the solemnness of Lent, we are still an Easter people. And he will raise you up. And he will raise you up, and he will raise you up on the last day. That is the way and the truth and the life. And you can bet your life on it. Amen.
Trusting in God's promise to reconcile all things, let us pray for the church, the well-being of creation, and a world in need. We turn to you for meaning, holy God. Nurture in your children the gifts of the Spirit poured out in baptism, and let the mind of Christ guide the church. Give wisdom and discernment to our bishops, pastors, deacons, teachers, and leaders. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We turn to you for renewal. Save lives and ecosystems threatened by pollution and a changing climate. Cleanse the earth's waters and restore the soil. Preserve rainforests, deserts, and wildlife that generations to come may cherish your creation. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We turn to you for justice. Uphold the worth and dignity of every person, especially any who experience hatred and rejection because of their gender, ability, sexual orientation, color, ethnicity, or religion. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We turn to you for healing. Send compassionate helpers to any who suffer because of war and violence. Shelter unhoused people, befriend those who are lonely, bring hope to any in despair, and console the bereaved. We pray today especially for Goody, for the King family, for Natalie, Evren, Joe, David, Doris, and for the family of Helen, for all those that we name in our hearts before you now. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We turn to you for purpose. Remind us of your faithfulness to this congregation. Increase our trust in your guidance and keep us near the cross. Grant that our acts of service will express Christ's sacrificial love. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We turn to you for peace. We honor the saints who lived in service to others. Inspire us by their example until you gather us into your kingdom. Hear us, O oh God. Your, your mercy is great. Accompany us on our journey, God of grace, and receive the prayers of our hearts through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also I invite you to share a sign of God's peace with those around you. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Holy God, our living water and our merciful guide, together with rivers and seas, wells and springs, we bless and magnify you. You led your people Israel through the desert and provided them water from the rock. We praise you for Christ, our rock and our water, who joined us in our desert pouring out his life for the world. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. 
Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his life, death, and resurrection, we await your salvation for all this thirsty world. Pour out your spirit on this holy food and on all the baptized gathered here for this feast. Wash away our sin that we may be revived for a journey by the love of Christ. Through him, all glory and honor is yours, almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses. We forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Bread for the journey of feast for hungry hearts, come. Thanks be to God.
generous God, at this table we have tasted your immeasurable grace. As grains of wheat are gathered into one bread, now make us one loaf to feed the world. In the name of Jesus, the bread of life. Amen. Beloved, we are God's own people, holy, washed, renewed. God bless you and keep you, shower you with mercy, fill you with courage, and give you peace. Amen. to serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.